Welcome back to you, Angry Bike Mechanic. Uh, I want to show you a couple things today. First, addressing a kink in your line, especially if it's close to the brake lever. It's really pretty easy to address because you can just shorten it, put a new olive and barb on, or a compression collar and insert, whatever you want to call it. But let me show you what this one looks like. And, uh, and then we'll get into uh, doing a bench bleed, which is where the brake is off the, uh, the bike. And you're doing the entire bleed on the bench, which gives you a lot of adaptability and gets most of the air out in ways that you couldn't do on, on the bike if you're having trouble with it. And, and doing a complete flush with a full explanation of, of what's going on there. So installing the new end on the brake line and the bleed. Okay, so if we look here, there's actually, you can see there's a little bit of a kink there. And that can cause problems with your braking. So your best bet is if it is in for service or you're working on the brake, let's get rid of that. Let's cut it out. Okay, for tools for this job and lubricants and things like that, you're going to need a bunch of different stuff. Uh, first, I start off from the inside here, two and a half millimeter hex key or Allen key. I like the ball drivers. This is from removing the uh, brake pads from the guide brakes <clears throat> or trail brakes in this case. A uh, bleeder block. This blocks the pistons from pushing out while you're doing the bleed. Um, this is a Torx 10, which is also on this uh, tri or three way Torx 10, 25, and 35. Um, the 10 is for loosening up the bleed bolts or bleed nuts on the uh, bleed ports on the brake lever and brake caliper. The dot grease, you'll see why. Dot 5.1 fluid, a hydraulic hose cutter, 8 millimeter key for fastening your insert and all olive or your compression collar and insert with the eight millimeter bolt through bolt and that is uh, you may not need to replace that but anyway um, that's for fastening 10 millimeter you'll see what I use that for that is for pushing the pistons in obviously you want the bleed kit uh, the SRAM bleed kit so you'll see I use the older version or the consumer version this is the pro kit um, and then here You'll watch me use this and this, and I show you the technique for still using these. This system here is kind of a fail proof. It's a two part system that um, the head of the insert threads into the compression sleeve. So the compression collar. So we recommend that in most cases and SRAM's going to recommend that for a foolproof uh, setup, but this is what you'll need. All right. So this front brake is obviously having issues. See that bend, that kink? If you got room, you need to cut that out of the line, replace the olive and barb, and reinstall the brake. Until you get rid of these kinks, your brake's not going to be performing optimally. The brake line needs to be smooth without kinks. Well, it's hard for this to focus. So, anyway, pro tip for the day. All right, so to do this right, you're gonna need your eight mil for that. Take your lever off. I like to take the lever off. You need a new barb or insert an olive. They do recommend the, the nice red one, it's fancy, but you don't always have to use it. So let's cut off this little guy. Install. What's nice with these is you can install these with a Torx 10. So you see this little guy? That's a Torx 10 driver. Oops. And get that flush with the end of the hose. You wouldn't believe the number of problems that this resolves. So next step, and I like to do this on all hydraulic fittings. This is the dot uh, 5.1 grease that SRAM makes. So roll the uh, olive on there. 
I'm going to also coat the olive in this. This makes it really smooth and reduces the torque required to install this back onto the lever. So I like to seat that all the way and I apply pressure to the hose as I insert the new fittings. I'm actually going to lube the threads with some of this grease as well. And catch the threads, continue to put pressure. And I can probably make it easier by spinning the lever instead. Don't worry if you lose fluid, you're going to need to do a full bleed on this anyway. Don't ever do a partial bleed with just the lever. That's lazy. So I always like to make sure I'm maintaining my seat. It's slippery with the grease here. So it's a little tough. I'm doing this for the video, but it might actually be worthwhile to either put the lever back on the bike or gently place the lever in a vise. So it's already started to expand or compress the olive. So can kind of release some tension on the hose there. The hose is still still able to move, but I can at least kind of release my tension a bit. Just having this bend keeps that tension. Now you can overdo it with these. So just watch your torque. This nut has seen a, a good bit of use. I like to alternate positions because these nuts do crack. And then once they crack, they're pretty useless for holding the, the pressure the way they're supposed to. So let's call that. Attach the bleed, bleed system. This is the avid kind of consumer bleed system. And um, anyway, this is the fluid going in, clean, dot 5.1. And this is the fluid coming out, which is, which is atrocious. And uh, at this point, I'm just literally going to just flush the old fluid out. Um, it's just awful. And in this case, we're going to go both ways. So I'm going to take a break and drop this fluid into the used fluid bin. And we'll start with some fresh and go from the lever. It is nice to be able to remove the hardware hydraulic hardware from a bike in order to work on it the way it's supposed to be operated on. So these, uh, these hydraulic brakes are really sensitive and the fluid breaks down, which means over time you need to replace the fluid because the fluid itself is tearing apart the inside of the brakes. That gray, that gray characteristic, on that last ble bleed is actually um, not so much eating apart the internal parts of the brake as much as it is the oil, the hydraulic oil going bad and turning acidic. And this isn't something that's discussed so much in the bike industry because someone in the bike industry doesn't seem to know. But um, we're talking about it right now, so now you know. So let's get this brake bleed on the books. Let's send some more fluid back down the line and see what we can pull out. It is really good to do a bleed both directions, if you can. Because you'll definitely reveal bad fluid in both directions. So let's pull some line out of the line here, out of the bottom. Now we'll go back and forth with this clean fluid. See that? It's already starting to gray. 
This is the fluid, the fresh fluid that was in the caliper. Do the same thing at the lever. And just contaminated fluid all the way around. It's nice, once you know you have most of the air out of the system, you can kind of go back and forth. Oh, there's some air. Now I'm actually vacuuming out the fluid. And you can see air is coming out. Watch your other your syringe to make sure you're not overdoing it. I need this syringe to kind of sit like this. Exactly the angle that I want to achieve there. Let's see what we can do here with the, with the caliper. There's the vacuum action working. The lever syringe is drawing. I think we have most of the air out here. We're just giving this system a good flush now. Using new fluid to clean out the old. You can use the vacuum on this side now. And draw air out of the system. Now I'm going to compress both syringes and I'm going to mostly at this point channel new fluid into the caliper and then up. Just for reference, I have used 50 cc's of fluid so far with this break. This is how old the bleed has been on this break. I don't like the little hose pinchers, so you can uh, get all the air out. If you are very careful with your fluid, it really doesn't take on a whole lot of air in storage. Let's try it again. Ah, uh, there is some air. Again, this is much easier off the bike than on the bike. When you're on the bike, you're dealing with a whole bunch of challenges like dexterity and logistics. That's pretty dang good. So you got to reach around from the caliper, especially on the back brake. You've got to reach around from the caliper to the lever. When you reinstall this, make sure you've got fluid coming out of your bleed port on the syringe and on the caliper so that you don't have an air gap. Make sure that's nice and snug. Got fresh fluid. I'm going to push a little bit of the old fluid in and if there's a mushroom of old fluid. You won't be able to see it on the camera that went into the new fluid. So we're just going to push this through. You can see that the fresh fluid is really diluting the darkened uh, caliper or the darkened uh, fluid in the lever syringe. So there we go. Now, if you really want to do the next step, push the brake a little bit. You can see the function test. The syringe is moving. Let's push the rest of that fluid through. Okay, and stop there. We're good. Now I'm going to cap the reservoir. Using my 10 Torx or Torx 10. 
Don't worry if you've made a mess. That's what cleaner's for. And then I'm going to go back and just make sure I've got proper back pressure. I'm going to kind of orient the lever in my hand the way it is sits on the bike. Just cycle it a little bit. But once that caliper bleed port is closed and your block is in there and you press the lever, you should have really good contact, really positive feel at your lever, which this one does now. So I'm going to push this down just to make sure that the fluid is at capacity and just disengage it from the lever body and its bleeding job. Again, uh, this fluid, make sure you, even though you're making a mess, make sure you don't let this contact your skin. So set the bleed plug in there, compress your lever, keep it compressed, and then screw this in. And that's it. Look at that fluid. Just filthy. Dispose of that separately from your oils. Hydraulic oil is different. Mineral oil is one thing, but hydraulic oil is different. So keep that in mind when you're making a mess. Wear gloves. Wear safety glasses. I've had these hoses explode and shoot me in the eye. So hydraulic fluid in the eye is like recipe for eye cancer. Hey, thanks for joining me. Thanks for, uh, if you stuck around for the whole video, thanks for watching how thorough uh, it can be. And, uh, you know, this is documenting in almost real time, except for a few seconds worth of cutting that I did, just how long it can take to do these, these brake bleed repairs. So uh, if, if a brake system has not been bled for a very long time, it can take a very long time. So be grateful for your mechanics who know how to do this correctly. And if you're not getting the proper bleed results, like your brakes just aren't working the way they're supposed to, you need to find a new mechanic. All right, Angry Bike Mechanic, thanks for joining.